welcome our viewers, wherever you are viewing from. Many are viewing from home or wherever where you are. Welcome uh, to the preaching this day. And um, as we continue to learn from the teaching on prayer, how Jesus Christ taught his disciples how to pray, today we are going to study about praying according to God's will. And before we proceed, let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we want to thank you, Lord. As you continue teaching us how to pray, be with us, O oh God, in this session, O oh God, so that, Lord, we may be built up by your word. I welcome the Holy Spirit to use me for the benefit of your people. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and believe. Amen. Now, um, last week we learned about how the disciples of Jesus Christ came and asked him to teach them how to pray. Um, praying is not an easy thing because I heard people pray, complaining about prayer. One person told me, Reverend, how, how do you spend the whole night praying? I can't understand because according to him, for this person, prayer should be as short as possible. Some people even quote scripture and say that um, we should not pray like pagans. Our prayer should be short and our prayer should not uh, contain so many words. Um, The other people complain about unanswered prayers, that they prayed and their prayers were not answered. Some feel that God had, had, forsake, had let them down. They had prayed, but God had not, never answered them. So they felt disappointed, and so they decided to stop praying. So learning to pray as a Christian is one of the most important aspects of our Christian life. Now, the Bible tells us that we have to pray and pray well. Because as a child of God, it is very important for us, for us to learn the language of God. And I'm going to, to look at some few uh, verses here that confirm the same, that um, as a Christian, the things which are very, very important uh, to do, one of them is learning how to pray and to pray well. When you read the James chapter 4, verse 2, it says that... Um, you desire but do not have, so you kill. You covet but you cannot do, you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. So here we get at the point that there is the right way of praying. And there's also the wrong way of praying. And therefore, as a Christian, we should really pray well. And it, make, it gives a person comfort when you know that what you have prayed is being answered. That God is paying attention to what you are praying. Therefore, as we prepare to pray, we should always put God first. We should always focus on God. We should always aim at glorifying God in our prayers. We should not be self-centered. Anytime we are self-centered, we run dry. We can no longer pray as we ought to pray. Then, we must, the Bible also says that we must pray and pray again. 
That is the other type of prayer whereby we must pray uh, many times. You remember when Jesus Christ was about to be crucified? He took three of uh, his most devoted disciples. He took them to the mountain. What did he do with them? He went there to teach them uh, to spend more time in prayer, in prayer. And he would go and come back and find them sleeping. And he would ask them, why didn't you, uh, uh, um, uh, why didn't you watch with me even one hour? So, you find that Jesus Christ went there and repeated the same prayer. And therefore, we also sometimes should also pray. As we continue to advance more in prayer, we must pray and pray again. In Luke chapter 18, verse 1 uh, and following, says, Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said in a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared uh, what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with a plea, grant me justice against the, my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care about what people think, Yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. So we find this kind of a prayer that is being described here as a prayer that we call persistent prayer. This persistent prayer does not mean that God does not hear us even when you pray short prayers. What it means is that we develop, we have now developed a very strong relationship with God and we have developed faith to an extent that we can continue staying uh, before God until all the requests are answered. Therefore, prayer can be compared to growth. There is a, a stage whereby, whereby a person is an infant and then keeps on growing, become, he grows to a uh, uh, teen and then to the old age. So, prayer also should be a, 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 a continuous process, a, a life whereby we are growing more and more. So, this is a kind of, a, the, the persistent prayer shows the, the advanced kind of prayer that we have attained. Um, in prayer also, we must bombard the throne of grace with all sorts of prayers. There are prayers we call the supplication, whereby we, we really humble ourselves before the Lord and we bring our wickedness before Him. We bring to Him our, our weak state. We have what we call the pleas, where we really plead with God because of ourselves, or because of our neighbors, or because of the nation. And we find these kind of prayers being prayed by Daniel when he was interceding for Israel. We have also a prayers we call the affirmation prayer, whereby we affirm what we are in Christ. For example, when you talk about um, that um, God has made us his own sons and daughters in him. Affirming, there's an, a prayer whereby you are affirming what God has said. God also has said in his word that if anyone is, is in Christ, he's, he can become a new creation. Now, when, when, when the Bible says that you have become a new creation in Christ, what it means is that you need to actualize that kind of a uh, 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 position that God has given us. And it becomes more intense, it becomes more um, real when you put it in prayer. When, uh, let us turn to Hebrews chapter 4. 
Hebrews chapter 4. Chapter 4, verse 14 <clears throat> says, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with the confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. So in this scripture we find that um, in prayer we enter there because we know Jesus Christ is a high priest, he is in heaven and we are told to hold firmly. Again we are told to approach that throne of grace with confidence, with boldness. Sometimes there is a way God delays to give us the answer, is that he wants to develop our confidence, our boldness towards him, so that we may be able to really know and enjoy the blessings that he has for us. If we just got all the answers at the time we wanted, then prayer would be meaningless. So sometimes God will delay our answers so that we can develop that relationship with Him and enjoy the results of prayer. So I want to encourage us, all of us, to really pray, especially during this time that we are in, uh, in uh, lockdown. We are in quarantine. I pray, I ask each one of us to really take time to pray and to take time to read the word of God and to pray well. I believe that this time God is going to answer all our requests because our God is faithful. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, I want to commit all my viewer, viewers so that God, you may be with them even as they continue to practice prayer. Be with them and strengthen them. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and believe. Amen.